Hello dear students, welcome on this e-learning platform of Apex Institute of Physics. We are studying uh, current and electricity chapter. This is the second lecture in that. So let me recap first what we learned in the first lecture, then we will go ahead. Important points. We talked about what the current is. So current is defined as a flow of charge per unit time from a given cross section. So mathematically we write it as I is equal to delta Q upon delta T. When we write delta Q upon delta T, it's average value. We can also go for the instantaneous value, which is dQ upon dt. So this is formula of current. Fine. Using this formula, we can also write the charge value or we can write charge Q is equal to integration dQ, which, uh, which from here can be written as integration of I into dt. So we can write down this Q as uh, integration I dt. If I is a given as a function of time, we can calculate the charge or change in charge or charge that flows. And then we talked about another quantity, which is a vector quantity called uh, current density. So current density is defined as current per unit cross sectional area. So it's written as I divided by any cross sectional area it is crossing through delta s cos theta cos theta is used to talk about the orientation of that surface basically from here the important relation comes is i is equal to integration z dot ds so that formula is important in order to get the questions solved uh, based on the current density okay and then we have talked about Cut mechanism of current inside a conductor and we have got to know one important relation of formula of current this current formula came out to be I is equal to N E A V D now this formula says current in a conductor depends on N do you remember what this N is Yes, you should. It is the number of free electrons per unit volume. Mind the two important terms, free and per unit volume. It's a free electrons. It's not the total electrons, right? So number of free electrons per unit volume. So and remembering N is very critical. Now E is the number 1.6 to the power minus 19. You know A is the cross sectional area. VD is the drift speed. Make sense? So this is the uh, relation. In examination, uh, this type of question has been asked to find the drift speed. So if we are looking for the drift speed from this, we can always write it as I upon N E A. Let me give you a simple example. What type of question that can be asked is this. Let's say uh, this is saying uh, that uh, there is a conductor and that conductor hasn't uh, cross-sectional area which is non-uniform some sort of this let's say so here this is going to be the area of cross-section at this stage this is going to be the area of cross-section so as you go from let's say location 1 to location 2 cross-section area increases All right so uh, you might be asked this kind of question that say let's say uh, at this point 1, veloc drift velocity is V1. At this point 2, drift velocity is V2. Let's say there is another cross section that we are considering. Here the electrons are drifting with velocity V3. Let's call it as a 3. And you might be asked to compare V1, V2, V3. Since this is a conductor, so what we need to remember, in conductor, whatever the current goes in, that comes out. That means current will remain same at all the cross-sectional point. So this is an important point that you need to remember in order to answer this type of questions correctly. So I will remain constant or same all through. So all the cross-section will have same value of I. So you can say I is the same for a conductor. N is the property of material, so whatever the conductor it is, it will have the same number of uh, current pre-electron density. E is a constant. 
using these things from here we can conclude something what we can conclude is drift speed is inversely proportional to cross sectional area inversely proportional to cross sectional area with this point we will get our answer done so what the answer is going to be more the cross sectional area less the drift speed less the cross sectional area more the drift speed so we will say v1 is going to be highest then it will be v3 and the least value will be of v2 v1 v2 v3 they are indicating drift speeds at the corresponding junctions of corresponding cross section so this would make sense to you guys now uh, apart from this uh, we also talked about the current density in terms of drift speed so current density is i by a so if we so do i by a over here we will come out to be equal to n e v d that means current density is directly proportional to drift speed and then we had uh, talked about what the drift speed is and uh, what the relaxation time is these are all important aspect we need to remember and uh, finally we got one relation thus uh, z vector is equal to sigma into e vector and i said this is known as ohm's law and i said that we will be studying from this onwards in detail so this was the recap of the previous lecture now let's go forward and uh, talk about this ohm's law in detail ohm's law so this relation z is equal to sigma e is known as ohm's law where z indicates for current density sigma indicates for conductivity of the material e indicates for electric field inside the conductor applied due to external source so this is ohm's law now let's say this is the conductor let's look at this figure and this is the conductor which has been uh, provided with this electric field e now you will think how we will be providing this electric field for that sake you need to connect this conductor by a potential difference or a battery so if we connect this conductor by a battery so this is a battery of potential v so this battery will have a positive terminal over here negative terminal over here so that means this terminal is a positive of the conductor this terminal is a negative of the conductor and we know the uh, electric field exists from the positive towards negative right so from positive towards negative it will be indicating e so e will be inside the conductor making sense and we have discussed that if this is the direction of e current direction will be same because of uh, movement of electron in the opposite direction a is indicating the area of cross section l is the length so relation comes out to be z is equal to sigma e vector and you can remember this as a uh, formula or ohm's law now we can rewrite this uh, ohm's law in a little different fashion and uh, that that that, that uh, way you are aware of it so what we can do we can rewrite this z definition so z is equal to i upon a so i am uh, we, we are looking for writing this expression in terms of i so this become i upon a a for cross sectional area and we can also rewrite this e now if this is a potential v that is potential difference is v so e can be written as uh, related with v and we know this v the potential difference across the conductor when the field is uniform is written as e into l now if we are using this from here we can write this e is going to be equal to v divided by l now let's substitute these two in ohm's law and uh, let's talk about only the magnitude so uh, we will be getting it as um, we are placing this in z is equal to sigma into e so this j will be equal to i upon a and this is going to be equal to sigma e in place of we are going to write v divided by l now if we rewrite this and rearrange it so we can write it as v is equal to l upon sigma a into i 
Now we look carefully about this uh, combination of about this combination of terms in which L is involved, sigma is involved, A is involved, and this multiplies with I. So V is indicating for the potential difference of the battery or the source that you applied. I refers to the current in the conductor and this bracket refers to the properties related to the conductor. That means length of that conductor, cross-sectional area of that conductor, conductivity of that conductor. Now we, we also defined one term called uh, resistivity. So resist, resistivity is defined as rho is which is equal to 1 upon conductivity so conductivity and resistivity they are reciprocal to each other so that's also one important formula and both are related to the property of material so conductivity tries to explain how easy it is for electrons to conduct inside the conductor whereas the resistivity talks about it is uh, how it is difficult for electrons to conduct inside the conductor. So resistivity talks about uh, difficultiness, whereas the conductivity talks about easiness in the conduction of electrons. So they are reciprocal to each other. Now, if we want to uh, substitute in terms of rho, so we can rewrite this as a V is equal to sigma can be written as one by rho, so rho will go upside. So it will become rho L upon A into I. Now this rho L upon A, this will appear uh, quite frequently in, in this expression. So we can rewrite this by a single letter. So we denote this by a single letter called R. So if we name it as a capital R, then we get a relation V is equal to I into R or R into I. This is known as another form of Ohm's law. So either you can write the Ohm's law in the form of this or we can write in this form of this. Both are correct. But in most cases, in order to solve the circuits, we are going to use this, this form of the Ohm's law that is V is equal to I R. Now what the R is here, this R is basically a number that we have assumed to be this one rho l upon a so rho which is a resistivity of the material l which is the length of the conductor divided by a which is area of cross section of that conductor so we can make this inside a bracket or box and we can remember so r is equal to rho l upon a is the resistance expression Resistivity is 1 upon rho and these two boxes are indicating the Ohm's laws. And they are the same thing, right? either you write in terms of current density or you write in terms of potential difference. Both are going to give the same value. Moreover, now this circuit, uh, that means this circuit is indicating this conductor connected with the battery. This battery is providing the field and because of this field the current is flowing through. How much the current is flowing through we can find from here. So how much the current is flowing through? We can say current that is going to flow through in this particular case is going to be I is equal to V divided by R. Generally we need to calculate the current and we will be given the battery. So to get the value of I what is needed is R. So if we know the R value we will be getting our answer very quickly. So for that sake we can say uh, this conductor has a resistance and that resistance is R and that R is given as a rho L by A that means we can represent this conductor this conductor simply by this kind of symbol so in circuit we will be using this kind of symbol and we are going to write it as R that will be saying this is resistance of this conductor and if the current I goes through it when you apply this potential difference V or battery of potential difference V then the relation will become I is equal to V upon R. Making sense? So this will make our calculations or our working very simplified. So conductor will be represented by this, this type of symbol which will be known as a resistance and resistance if it is known to us and then we can get the current through the resistance if the battery is being applied.
this current is going to move from higher terminal of the battery to the lower terminal uh, in this way so we will say current moves from higher potential to lower potential so this will be very very useful in order to solve the circuits then we need to know what the r is we will say r is rho l upon a that is it depends on the material rho is the property of material so resistivity and conductivity both are properties of material that means they do not depend on the dimensions and l is the length a is the cross sectional area from here we can think of if the length of the conductor is more resistance is going to be more if the cross sectional area of the conductor is more resistance is going to be less and if the resistivity is more then resistance is going to be more so point is resistance depends on these things that means resistance depends on the material as well as its geometry and size whereas the resistivity does not depend on the geometry and size it depends only on the material for instance if we are choosing copper so for copper resistivity will remain the same no matter how long wire you are using how uh, thickness you are using resistivity is a fixed okay whereas the resistance will not be fixed resistance will depend on the cross sectional area as well as on the length along with depending on the material right so this point becomes critical in order to answer questions in the examination okay so this is all about ohm's law so you can remember this form of ohm's law and uh, this form of ohm's law then the relation between resistivity and conductivity and the resistance and the circuit co uh, connections one more point uh, regarding this uh, here l is the length of course a is a cross sectional area what we mean by the length we can understand this much better this length is basically length along the direction of current so uh, if this the current is flowing in this direction so length of the material or conductor along the direction of current that's we are going to put over here and which area we are going to use area of cross section that means area which is perpendicular to the direction of current so area we use perpendicular to the direction of current and l is the length along the direction of current so let's see an example and try to use this formula of resistance properly let's see this figure and the question is to find resistances across these terminal points and the resistivity of the material is rho so rho is the resistivity of material we are supposed to find a resistance resistance across points a and b so if we write resistance across point a and b then what that value is going to be in terms of given uh, geometrical dimensions like a is this dimension b is this c is this this is a cuboidal conductor and this is the resistivity so if we need to find the resistance across terminal point a and b that means we need to connect these two terminals with the battery if we connect these two terminals with the battery so current will be flowing like this so current will be flowing like this and going to this so which length it covers so length is along the direction of current flow so you'll find c dimension will be behaving like a length and which dimension will be or which area will be behaving like cross sectional area this area is going to behave like a cross sectional area so can we write this area is going to be equal to multiplication of the two dimensions which are a and b is it making sense so this is how we are going to decide which is the length in the given conductor and which is the area so uh, for this particular case rab we will be writing l value as uh, this is going to be written as rho l upon a rho l upon a right so uh, what this l value will be you say l value will be equal to c what the value of a is going to be you will say a will be equal to a into b so writing this we can find out the value of r a b this is going to be equal to rho c divided by a b making sense 
if you have got it then you can write down the resistance for any case that means you need to just search for the length that is along the direction of current area perpendicular to the direction of current which is known as cross sectional area if you understood this then pause the video and uh, solve this r uh, let's say cd so what the rcd is going to be and then then find the value of r across ef okay so rcd let, let us write rcd that means you need to now apply the battery across c and d so the length uh, of uh, length will be corresponding to to the direction of current direction of current will be along the b so it will become rho into l which is going to be b divided by cross sectional area you'll find this front surface is going to be like cross sectional area which will be equal to a into c I hope you have got this or uh, uh, when you solved you found this if you found this it's a correct similarly R E F again apply the battery across E F then find the current will be running from E to F or F to E so that means A dimension is along the length so it will be rho A and then cross section will be decided by the other two dimension that's are B and C so B C so this is how we can write the resistance in uh, of, of a cuboid if we know across which point we are applying the potential difference so whenever we are uh, writing the resistance value we need to keep in mind that we need to first ask what are the points across which we are interested in finding the resistance value once we uh, know those points we can find the direction uh, we, we can find the value of length and cross-sectional area and once we have got these two numbers, we can always use rho L upon A to get the answer for resistance. Let us take one more example and try to use the formula rho is R is equal to rho L by A. So let's say it says a cylindrical wire has resistance R and resistivity rho so i'm writing in sort you can catch it resistance is r resistivity is rho we need to find new resistance and resistivity if the following changes are made so it says find resistance and resistivity resistivity after following processes or changes after followings so first part is wire is cut into half part or we can say uh, two equal parts so the wire has been cut into two equal parts so the half part of the wire we are interested in so we can say uh, how this R is going to change how its resistance uh, resistivity is going to change so let's say new resistance and resistivities are R dash and rho dash so what this rho dash is going to be we will say new resistivity is going to be same because material remains same it does not depends on the dimensions and what about new resistance new resistance is going to be uh, dependent on the length and we have made cut into half parts uh, that means now the length is half so if you are finding the resistance of the one half part then the length will be half because of new length so we are writing like resistivity new length divided by new area let me write properly this is a dash is indicating everything is new but we, we got to know new resistivity is same as the old resistivity so we can write it as old resistivity we also know when you cut it down area is not changing so new area is the old area but length has changed to half so it becomes L by 2 you can rewrite it as 
half rho L by A. This rho L by A is going to be indicating the original resistance. So we can claim from here the new resistance is going to be equal to half of the original resistance. Making sense? So if we cut a wire into half and we are interested in finding the resistance of one half, then you'll find the resistance is going to be R by 2. However, the resistivity will not change. The reason being resistivity does not depend on the dimensions or the geometry. It depends on the material. Now let's take another example. Again, sim simpler example. Similar type questions you might have done in the, at your 10th standard as well. Let's say we are compressing the wire to reduce it to half length. So wire is compressed, wire is compressed to half of its length, to half of its length. Now what these new values will be? Again, we will saying the new resistivity will be equal to the old resistivity because the resistivity does not depend on the physical processes or, or, or on, on the geometry and size or shape, right? It depends on the material. Material is same. So we will be saying that the resistivity remains same. What about the new resistance? You, know, you will find new resistance will be new resistivity, new length divided by new area. Now, when we compress, when we compress a wire, that means we are reducing the length and here we have been given the new length is going to be half of the old length so it's going to be l by 2 can you think of what what happens with this area whether this area remains same or changes you'll find when you're compressing or elongating a wire then you will be making change in the area because length is adjusting then area has has to adjust so there's a difference when we cut or when we compress. Making sense? So what we are going to do to in order to find this area, we will be saying the mass will not change. Assuming density is not changing, then we can think of volume will not change. So we'll say initial volume and final volumes are going to be equal. So V for volume. Final volume is equal to initial volume. We know for cylindrical wire, volume will be written as AL. So A dash L dash is going to be equal to A into L. Now from here we will be able to find the value of A dash. It's going to be A L divided by L dash which is L by 2. Then you will realize this new area is going to be twice of the original area. So area will change. In fact you will find area will get doubled. So area will become twice A. Now we can find out what the resistance, new resistance is going to be. So it's going to be rho. It's going to be L by 2 and new area is twice A. If you rewrite it carefully, then you'll find 2 and 2 becomes 4 rho L upon A. So we will be finding it as a new resistance is equal to old resistance by 4. I hope you have catched the crux point. When we are compressing to half, answer is R by 4. When we are cutting it into half, answer is R by 2. There is a difference. Difference is because of the area involved. Making sense? So we need to keep in mind which term has been used, whether it has been cut down or it has been compressed. Fine. So this just uh, gives us idea about uh, difference between resistance and resistivity because resistivity depends on the material, resistance depends on the geometry, length and cross-sectional area. So we need to check whether uh, length is changing, whether cross-sectional area is changing or whether both are changing. Once we are able to identify, we can get our answer proper. Here is another example of calculating resistance, R for resistance. So question says find resistance. This is the figure and resistivity is known to us. Resistivity is rho. We need to answer uh, resistance in terms of rho and the given parameters. Given parameters are R1, R2 and L. This is the direction of current. That means we are applying the potential difference between this terminal point and this terminal point. And this is indicating a conductor whose cross-sectional area is changing from radius R1 to radius R2. So this is a conductor changing cross-sectional area. So what we are going to do in this kind of questions, we are going to start from this point. And we will be moving a distance x, let's say, 
in this distance x we are going to consider a small element of thickness dx and in that dx thickness we will be looking for what happens so uh, this dx thickness will be a uh, kind of disk you can think of and so this dx is going to be indicating the length of that conductor current is moving along this length and area for that area let's say this carries the radius r so we will be writing the differential element uh, for this particular uh, differential resistance for this particular element so let me write solution over here how we proceed with the solution we will saying that from one uh, and we are going at a distance x taking a dx element for this dx element let's say resistance is dr now this dr resistance will be written as per the formula resistivity of that part into the length of that part the length of that part is to be considered as dx divided by area of that cross section now what that area of cross section is going to be can we say this area of cross section is going to be pi r square where r should be the radius of that particular strip now how to get that radius of that particular strip that radius is going to dependent on r1 r2 l and x just to uh, illustrate how we are going to get that we can use this uh, figure or uh, let's draw a figure for that separate figure let's say this is the length we are thinking about and we starting from this point here it's a r1 here it goes up to r2 and this is a straight line and we are interesting on this part which is this this is r and this is x and the total is l now if we proceed this further so you can see two triangles a big triangle and this small triangle they are the similar triangles so we can use the property of similarity this length is going to be r2 minus r this length we can find it out right so this is this is going to be r minus r1 so can we claim r minus r1 divided by x is equal to this this gap this gap is going to be equal to r2 minus r1 r2 minus r1 and the base is going to be l from here we can calculate the value of r so this value of r is going to be r1 plus r2 minus r1 divided by l into x are you getting what i'm doing if you're getting it it's uh, done so this is r2 minus r1 divided by l and into x now this expression is trying to say the value of r for any x if you choose x equal to 0 your answer will be r1 if you choose x equal to l your answer will be r2 you choose any value of x you will get the value of r at that location okay so this is the value of small r we are going to put over here and we are going to square it then we are going to integrate it so we, uh, we are going to say that net resistance is going to be equal to integration of these dr elements later on we are going to think about that they are going to be in series because they are uh, the current is going to be same hence we are writing r1 plus r2 plus r3 that's why we are integrating as a dr so further proceeding will lead to rho into dx divided by a a which is pi r square pi r square r square is going to have this term which is basically r1 plus r2 minus r1 divided by l into x and we need to make the square of this entire stuff if we square this and then we need to integrate it and integration will have a limit of x it will run from 0 to l value so it's some little bit mathematics or integration so we can perform this integration we will get our the value of r so let's proceed and try to uh, simplify this as much as possible so from here what we can do is uh, we can write uh, take this rho as a common pi as a common then it is written some sort of some sort of uh, 1 upon x square so we know what is the integration of 1 upon x square it becomes minus 
1 upon x so it will become 1 upon x in place of x this is this entire number is going to be there and that entire number is uh, r1 plus r2 minus r1 divided by l into x and this will carry limits running from 0 to l not only this the the, the term which is uh, coefficient of x that has also be divided with so this has to be divided with this entire number has to be divided with r2 minus r1 further divided by l so this division has to come there now if we simplify this i'm writing uh, or i'm jumping some steps you can uh, write uh, in, in detail so uh, this division this l will go upside r2 minus r1 will be downside so it will become rho l divided by pi in bracket r2 minus r1 and let's place the limits of integration and simplify it there's going to be a minus sign to so for this minus sign i'm placing zero first so when we place a zero it will become one upon r1 minus then we place in place of x as l so l, l, l and l will get cancelled out and it will be one upon one upon can i write directly l and l get cancelled out r1 r1 will get cancelled out so it will become r2 you can check the calculation by writing one more step if you are able to digest this then we are very close to our answer so it become rho l upon pi r2 minus r1 within that bracket in this bracket we are going to get it as the r2 minus r1 in the numerator divided by r1 r2 in the denominator then you can see carefully that r2 minus r1 they are getting cancelled out so r will become is equal to rho l divided by rho l divided by pi r1 r2 so you can remember this as a result as well so this becomes our answer so when whenever you are getting this kind of uh, conductor whose radius is changing from r1 to r2 and its length is l and current runs along the direction of this length then you'll find the resistance of this kind of conductor is going to be written as uh, as we have got over here that is this so this can also be considered as a result r is equal to rho l upon pi r1 into r2 okay if you remember then this kind of question you can answer directly uh, or otherwise you need to remember how uh, understand how how we are getting this thing so we are using r is equal to rho l upon a then we are going to go get the value of r then integrating then finding a, this this particular expression so this is an important question to to think about and to remember let's take one more example which is very common and important as well so let's say this is a combination of two cylinders one cylinder is of radius uh, a another cylinder is of radius b they have been co coaxially placed and let's say their length is l and uh, between a and b that gap has been filled with the uh, conducting material the conductivity of that material is sigma and if we talk about the resistivity so we can write the resistivity is equal to 1 upon sigma so we can connect this conductivity with the resistivity we know the relation now we we can be asked two type of questions over here about resistance one when we are connecting these two end with a battery or having di di creating potential difference between these two points so uh, we will be doing both of this those questions over here so let's say it's asking find resistance number first along the length along the length so when i say along the length that means this point and this point they have been connected with the battery and current runs along the length so current is going to move along the length that means in this manner so i'm just erasing these things and uh, 
trying to find out this thing right so what we are going to do we need to see from where the current is going to flow you'll find the current is going to flow through the conducting part not with this part so if we write the resistance along this so you say the resistance is going to be the length that uh, current follows so length is l so we are going to write l and the resistivity resistivity is a rho so rho into l divided by cross sectional area now which cross sectional area is that is used by the current you will find the shaded area or this colored area is the area through which the current is going to flow current will not be going to flow from this uh, hollow part so we need to write that area from where the current flows so this hollow area will be area uh, total minus inside one so we can say it's going to be pi b square minus pi a square so we are writing that area which is the area of the conductor so r will become equal to instead of rho we can write sigma so it's going to be l upon sigma downside and from here we can take this pi outside so our answer becomes this is it making sense so this will be the answer along the length now second question that is popularly asked is along the radial so along the rad along the diameter what does that mean that means you are applying a battery making this as a terminal this as a terminal so here you are applying a battery if you apply this battery then you'll find the current will be flowing like this that means current will be flowing in radial direction so i'm just erasing this was just to illustrate you or explain you and uh, along the diameter we are going to go then we can see this picture this picture can be helpful for us so there is going to be an inner uh, radius and there is going to be an outer radius and if we are looking from the top it will look like this and how the current is going to be moving that we need to think about so current will be flowing like this uh, let's say we have made this inner as a higher potential lower as a, outside as a lower potential so current will be moving like this from this part from this part so from all the parts you will find current will be moving radially outwards and if we want to flow it radially inwards we can simply change the polarity okay so uh, that means the length along which the current goes is not l it is going to be in this way so what we are going to do basically we are going to come at a distance uh, a radius r we are going to take a strip and that strip will be of thickness dr and this dr will run along the uh, complete length so that means it will be a thin cylinder this thin cylinder will have a radius r and thickness is dr so that means how, uh, the current which is moving or crossing this it is basically crossing dr dr length and how much the area it is being used you can say area is pi or 2 pi r into l so for this particular element the dr value differential resistance is going to be rho into length you'll find that length is dr divided by area you'll find area is going to be 2 pi r into l for cylindrical right so that will be area of the cylinder so we will say the 2 pi r is a periphery and length is along this so that curved surface of the cylinder will become the area through which the current is going to cross once you have understood this then we can say all these resistances are going to have the same current so they are in the series so r is going to be integration of dr and once we are ready for this integration so we can put the value of dr dr is going to be rho d uh, small r divided by 2 pi small r into l now this is small r has to run from particular value to another value this is from a value to b value so limit has to go from a to b making sense now this is an integration which can be performed and uh, simplified over here to get our answer so let me simplify and we can remember the final answer which will be useful for examinations so rho is is going to be r is equal to rho 2 pi l we can take this 2 pi l outside 
now you will find its integration of 1 upon r integration of 1 upon r is ln r so we can put the limits limits will run from a to b using the properties of logarithm you will find it will become ultimately ln b by a so our answer will become r is equal to rho upon 2 pi l into ln b by a where b is the outer radius a is the inner radius so this becomes a result for resistance when the current runs radially so whenever radially current is running in uh, concentric cylinders having conducting medium in between you can use this formula directly rho in place of rho we can also write sigma 1 upon sigma that also works so rho upon 2 pi l where l is the length and ln you will find b by a and when we are using uh, the current along the length this is the formula so we need to differentiate between the these two things that means we need to take care during reading the question whether the resistance is being asked along the length or along the diameter that means whether the battery has been connected between uh, the terminals or two ends across the length or it is connected between two cylinders so accordingly our answer will matter important so you just note it down and uh, and keep practicing remember that's going to be beneficial now let's move towards next point which is effect of temperature now we know that when temperature is change, changed then you will find the uh, material uh, material property themselves changes because uh, when we change the temperature inside the material you'll find the molecules they start uh, vibrating even faster right so because of the vibrations how conductors behaves and how uh, these resistance and resistivity change thus we are going to discuss on this part that's effect of temperature now let's talk about this resistivity we know this resistivity depends uh, uh, or this is reciprocal to conductivity you must be remembering a formula for conductivity that we calculated uh, when we had this uh, Ohm's law. So we called a particular number as a conductivity and that number was N E square tau divided by 2M. So this is expression for conductivity that means conductivity of material depends on n which is a free electron density e which is a constant m which is the mass of an electron and tau now these numbers n e m and 2 they are constant they are independent of temperature mostly because e is a fixed number m is independent of temperature n is also independent of temperature what is going to be affected when the temperature is changed this tau this tau is known as a relaxation time relaxation time which is also the time between two successive collisions so when the molecules inside the conductor are vibrating slowly then they will have more time between two collisions that means tau will be more when uh, they are vibrating faster then that that means the time interval between two collisions is going to be less that means relaxation time will be less when the temperature is higher right so this is the point when temperature is increased molecule vibrate faster so we can say on increasing temperature on increasing temperature collisions become faster this is the point I'm trying to write for your note on increasing temperature collision or collisions of electrons with the lattice because we have understood these electrons moves in voids and collide with lattice so their collision with lattice is more rapid with lattice are faster 
quicker rather faster means quickly so which means can we say this indicates that tau which is a relaxation time is going to reduce so tau decreases as the relaxation time decreases using this expression of conductivity we can claim this further helps us to claim that the conductivity of conductor decreases which further helps us to claim that the resistivity of conductor increases make sense so resistivity increases on increasing the temperature that is the crux point we need to remember so when the temperature is increased resistivity increases conductivity decreases this is because this relaxation time decreases understood now then after we can claim what happens so one claim has been there on increasing the temperature resistivity increases similarly on decreasing the temperature resistivity decreases moreover we also have a relation r is equal to rho l upon a ignoring the uh, effect of thermal expansions we can say when temperature is increased resistivity increases hence resistance also increases so we can say since this is the relation this will indicate if t t for temperature if temperature increases this implies that resistance also increases so resistance increases when temperature increases resistivity increases when temperature increases and if the temperature decreases these quantities decrease making sense now this is true for conductors so for conductor we can we need to remember this because we are talking about the conductor so that's why we are focusing on the conductor however we can remember another point for semiconductors for semiconductors you will be studying semiconductor later on in detail but since the point is similar we can uh, understand this point as well for semiconductors it is opposite what happens if t increases then we will find their conductivity increases that means their resistivity decreases hence resistance decreases so we need to remember this is a counterpoint so for conductors on increasing the temperature resistance increases whereas for semiconductor on increasing the temperature resistivity and resistance decreases whereas the conductivity increases now uh, this is an important point in the favor of semiconductors later on you will be studying that uh, in electric circuits uh, there is a lot of loss of heat because of the resistance so because of resistance heat is being lost and when we use an instrument you have observed those instrument gets warm up over the time be it a a uh, light bulb uh, or or a computer or or anything right even in your mobile so they becomes heated up why because the heat is being uh, just created this heat in turn increases the temperature of the device so it increases the temperature of the device because of this the resistance of the device increases and because of the increase in the resistance it loses more amount of heat then the further heating uh, occurs so this becomes a vicious cycle that cycle wastes lot of heat in conductors are getting uh, the point inside so in conductors heat is lost by the resistance but heating of those uh, uh, this this heat in turn increases the resistance which further creates more heat okay but it is opposite in case of semiconductors in semiconductor heat is being lost by the resistance because of this heat the temperature of that resistance increases as the temperature increases then you'll find the resistance decreases then the production of heat decreases so loss of heat is very very less in case of semiconductors as compared to the conductors that's why we are preferring semiconductors a good example you prefer uh, this bulb uh, this this led light as compared to the old bulb right so uh, these these leds lights are not so warm up as compared to the old bulb because old bulb were based on the conductors 
and these LED lights that we use nowadays they are based on the semiconductors. Semiconductor has lot of lot of uh, um, good features and that you will be learning in the chapter semiconductors. So I'm not going to go into detail but I just compare resistance and temperature relation in the two. Okay. Now let's move ahead and try to find the formula of resistance and resistivity that influenced by temperature. Okay, let's say we have a conductor and it has a resistance R0 when the temperature of that conductor is T0 and when this temperature is changed to T then the resistance becomes R. So R0 is a resistance at temperature T0 R is a resistance at temperature T this T may be greater than T0 may be smaller than T0 accordingly we will find our relation right so the relation goes like this final resistance is equal to initial resistance that is R0 in bracket 1 plus alpha delta T that means T minus T0 so this is the relation between temperature and resistance and this is an important relation that uh, uh, will be a, um, used to answer the questions in which temperature and resistance is, resistances has been involved okay and uh, what it says the final resistance depends on the initial resistance 1 plus alpha final temperature minus initial temperature here alpha is a thermal coefficient for resistance so alpha is coefficient of thermal resistance so we can call it as a coefficient of thermal resistance now this uh, this value of alpha that's important for us is a positive for conductors and it's a small so it's a small value with a positive sign so since it is positive that means if t is more than t naught so this number is going to be positive alpha is a positive so entire number will become more than one hence r becomes more than r naught that means when t is more than t naught r is more than r naught and similarly if t is a less than t naught so this number will become less than one so r becomes less than r naught so when the temperature is less than t naught r will become less than r naught so more the temperature more the resistance that is trying to indicate okay now just like this uh, resistance resistivity is also depends on the temperature let's say resistivity is rho naught in case of uh, t naught temperature it is rho in case of t temperature so we will be writing rho resistivity is equal to rho naught in bracket 1 plus alpha delta t now this delta t will be indicating t minus t naught where t naught is the initial temperature t is the final temperature Again, we can interpret if the initial temperature is more, then you'll find if the initial temperature is more, then you'll find it's going to be less than 1, so it's going to be uh, this final resistivity is less than 1. So when the temperature is more, resistance resistivity will be more, and if the temperature is less, resistivity is going to be less. So we can use this expression in order to find the resistivity and resistance based on temperature you now if temperature change is very small so we can rewrite this so uh, let me write it properly this is for very small change in temperature very small change in temperature we can rewrite this how it going to look like you can see over here we can write it as R minus R naught R minus R naught is equal to R naught alpha T minus T naught now if we have changed the temperature by small amount alpha is a very small number then you'll find the change in R is also going to be small so this could also be written in terms of differential format which is dr that is small change in resistance is going to be the resistance into alpha into dt or uh, since this is small change that this can also be written as r so r alpha dt this way we can also write it 
since a change in r is very small so either you write r or write r not both are going to be same so this is the differential expression for resist change in resistance with the temperature so change in resistance is equal to resistance alpha delta t we can use and if there is a large change you can use this expression generally we use this expression for resistance this expression for uh, resistivity now how this uh, this uh, resistivity expression has come this so we say r is equal to rho l by a whenever we are using these kind of concepts we are ignoring thermal expansion because in your mind this question can arise because when the temperature changes so what happens to length length also changes what happens to area area also changes so we are ignoring the thermal expansion aspects and we are simply talking about change in resistance and resistivity because of the temperature that means because of the material itself how the material is behaving so if the resistivity is changing very similar way resistance has to change ignoring the thermal expansion aspect if the question deliberately ask that involved the thermal expansion then you need to talk about l and a along with rho so this is true based on this we can find this now so if at all it is asking the thermal expansion aspect to include so first write the resistivity in this way then write the new length new area then calculate the new resistance so this is basic you can say based on this we find this okay so here from here to here when we have gone we have ignored the thermal expansion aspect generally they don't ask for including the thermal expansion aspect because of the simple reason it becomes more complicated because you need to in, in count uh, you need to count length expansion as well as area and then you need to do the calculation which will be lengthier and our job in physics is not to do lengthier calculation but to understand the physical phenomena hence we ignore them okay well so that's all for this video in this video lecture we have covered a lot more important thing particularly we have talked about ohm's law in terms of current density in terms of v is equal to ir then resistance then resistivity then conductivity and then couple of example of calculation of resistance when the area of cross section is changing length how to write the length how to write area of cross section and then finally we talked about the effect of temperature on resistance and resistivity all these points are very very important so make your notes revise them if you have any question or query you can always ask well so that's all thank you for watching have a good time